Hey there, friends. Today I'd like to talk about getting a job, namely your first job in animation. And, in good internet fashion, it's in list form. List form! It's in list form. A few things first off, I've never really gotten a job in animation at an animation studio. I have worked in animation for over 25 years and I've been responsible for hundreds of productions, but going to a talent development or producer or production manager to land a gig is not something that I have ever done. I'll also say that these might not be as relevant in every country or every city as they are in New York and on the East Coast of the United States. Animation in general is a peculiar culture, and different parts of the world have their own specific, unique, peculiar cultures. East Coast animation, in A Beef Witch Long, predates Tupac and Biggie, has some fundamentally different approaches to animation than the culture in Los Angeles. So these are some observations that may be useful in New York and are possibly applicable elsewhere. They're also my personal observations. Other people might have conflicting views, which is more than fair, and these are definitely not definitive, which is some sequel baiting. The underlying approach to job hunting is the same as the underlying approach to directing a team. You want to put yourself, the production, and your colleagues in the best position to succeed. So, tip number one for getting your first job in animation. Nepotism. Is your Mima an art director at an ad agency? And Ellen in the news department at NBC? Congratulations. You have a very good chance of getting an entry-level position in animation. Just have them call up the business person or studio owner and politely ask if they're looking for help and if they can send your resume. There you are. Your foot is in the door. Now I'm sure there have been cases when this hasn't gotten a person at least an interview. It's a big world. All sorts of crazy things happen all the time. But in my experience, this is a foolproof way of getting a start in the animation business. So okay, not everybody has what dingus is like to call good genes. I sure do not. So. What do, what do folks like us do? The next best thing is to know someone with a connection to the studio. This is where folks who went to art school have a big advantage over those who did not. As much as this field is merit-based, you don't need a degree from an expensive college or really any art school background as long as you have a good portfolio. An art school should help you build a good portfolio and the expensive ones also tend to have loads of industry ties. So if you're fortunate enough to have that structure, use it. I was working at the ink tank, so I don't know, 30, 25 years ago, something like that. We get in a VHS tape from RISD, and if you're familiar with the television program Super Jail, you're familiar with the work of the creator Christy Caracas. So we get in this VHS tape, and um, it was from Christie. It was his junior film, I think, Space War or something like that. And I thought it was pretty fun and pretty cool, and i check it out because I looked at every tape that came in because I had nothing better to do. And um, so I put it in my little pile of interesting stuff. And then a few days later, Amy Kravitz telephoned for Bob Blackman, the boss of the boss, and said, um, hey, you should look at this guy's work if you have a position available. You know, you should consider working with him for the summer, you know, running errands and stuff. So I say, oh, yeah, Bob, I saw his tape. It's good. You'll like it. Uh, we should we should definitely bring this guy in. So based on really Amy Kravitz recommendation, we had Christy come and work with us for a few months. And uh, it was, you know, great fun for all. I got to take film to the lab and wear a white belt every day. Uh, and that's how he got his first job at this one particular studio uh, which then he went on to work for music television blah blah blah, etc etc teachers and job offices at school are one part of creating your own family for nepotism 
but your most effective Mimas and Peepaws and Enaws are your classmates. This again is where folks who have attended noted art schools have a big advantage. The people in your intro to After Effects class may very well be the people you work with on and off for the next few decades. So, be kind to your classmates. Support them in their work. Keep in touch after you leave school. Someone you studied with might wind up on a production looking for more artists. Their recommendation will carry a lot of influence. Producers don't want to spend a lot of time staffing a production. They want to have as few unknown amongst the crew as possible. So if an artist says, hey, I know someone from school who's cool, that makes their life a lot easier. So be a good student, be a good classmate, and that will help you as you proceed into a professional career. That's tip one, nepotism. Either genetic or constructed family. Which will bring us to tip two, socialize. This is especially important if you don't have ties from school. Yes, it can be difficult for those of us with social anxiety. If it makes it any easier for you, animation is an art form that attracts the introverted and the anxious. At the same time, it is a fundamentally social process unless you are one person making independent films and are off by yourself on your laptop or iPhone or computer or whatever, you will need interpersonal skills anyway. There are a number of organizations like ASIFA, which is an international organization with chapters in most regions, including fairly active groups in New York and Los Angeles, or Women in Animation, which hosts talks and screenings and has mentorship programs and is gender inclusive. Most cities and towns have film festivals. Local filmmakers often have special screenings at these regional festivals and artists from all over will attend, which offer even more opportunities for social connection. Documentarians, live action directors, other animators might be interested in connecting with a young artist without, man without many credits. Uh, New York also has events like Animation Nights, which is a monthly screening of select shorts. In ordinary times, those screenings attract dozens and dozens of artists each month. Um, each summer, Animation Block Party runs a weekend festival at the, Brooklyn Academy, uh, at the Brooklyn Academy of Music, which is one of the best screening rooms in the whole city. Uh, they also screen in other venues. Uh, there are loads and loads of motion graphics and CGI meetups and social groups. So stepping out of your personal bubble into these constructed communities offers the opportunity to connect with folks who are working and who may know where the jobs are. Which brings us to tip three. Be assertive, but don't be too persistent, I guess. Don't be too persistent. Don't be annoying. For example, so there's a new exhibit about Sesame Street opening at the Museum of the Moving Image. This is hypothetical. Uh, you go to the opening event, and afterwards, after the talk, you approach one of the panelists. And here's what you might say. Hey, hi, I'm blah, blah, blah. Thanks for talking tonight. I really like your description of Elmo. Uh, I'm just starting out as an animator. Who can I talk to at Sesame about doing some work together? Or who can I send my reel to? Can I send it to you? Uh, and don't forget to let them talk. It's not a lecture. You're not YouTubing at them. It's always important to also in these situations to present a specific request that's actionable, such as, hey, can you give me the contact information of the person who looks at portfolios or even get their own contact information? Allow them to give you something and sort of complete a transaction. So that night or the next morning at the latest, send them a quick email, a note saying, hey, thanks for taking the time to talk with me. I got a lot out of our conversation. Here's a link to my work. I'd love to be a part of your team. Let me know if I can help you with anything. You know, something just very nice and light and don't be too heavy. And if they don't reply, because they might not reply, let it go. It's fine. Don't bug them. Uh, I would suggest contacting them again but in a month or two months and have it be a specific new thing, like something that you've worked on. Hey, I just finished this GIF for this character design or this short film or this website or this blog post and I wanted to share. I hope everything's great with you. I'd love to hear your opinion on this. Let me know if you need anything. 
That's it. You're attempting to build relationships. If you email a person every day or just show up at their office, that is creepy. Nobody wants that. Nobody wants to work with someone who does not respect personal space. Maybe you couldn't make it to the screening. Okay, so maybe you couldn't make it to the talk. Here's another possible angle. You know that this is a talk at the museum, didn't make it. Email the speaker and say, hey, I saw that you were speaking last night and I couldn't make it, but I'm really looking forward to seeing the show or seeing what you're working on, whatever. Uh, I love the work you're doing and would love even more to be part of it. Is there something I can, uh, is there somebody over there at your place I can speak with? Something like that. You know, you can always just contact someone with no pretext as well. It's a little less effective than having something specific to talk about. Most the most producers and animation studios and buyers have emails which you can find. You can always also just call up their office and ask. It's you know these things are not mysteries. Uh, at this point, you are not simply an artist. You're not simply an aspiring animator. You are also a salesperson. So selling anything your own work included becomes a lot easier when you have a when you make a personal connection even the smallest thing like oh i like what you said about elmo tickle me elmo scared me a lot scared me a little too uh, it's a good start to building a rapport and again do not be creepy remember the person you want to work with wants needs to want to work with you too they're human so how would you presumably a human as well like to be treated if you were in their position. So, okay, tip four. Have presence or be present. What does that mean? Is it years of yoga and talk therapy sponging into my brain? Maybe. Try to understand your surrounding. Um, which, and uh, try to understand your surrounding and your situation. Don't talk to the person from Sesame about how much you love Aqua Teen Hunger Force unless you've learned that they used to work at Adult Swim or you noticed their Master Shake tattoo. Do talk to them about Snuffleupagus or Dragon Tales or even the meme of Morgan Freeman as Easy Reader which just popped up in your feed. Connect with what their work is meet them on their ground in their terms understand that the work a studio produces is specific and has a tone and a theme when you contact someone about stop motion work who only does 2d puppeted animation your email comes across like spam if you want to reach out to a producer like that acknowledge that you're doing different work it's still exceedingly unlikely that you'll find a spot without work samples that and the technique, but you're again putting yourself in a better position. I have also gotten a lot of emails addressed to other people or other studios, and I very much understand the difficulties with cold contacting people, and I do sympathize. I understand that copy and paste mistakes happen but also they make you feel bad when you receive it. You know, would you want to receive a note like that addressed to somebody else? So be careful and be present. Which brings us to the final tip for today. Tip five. The best ability is availability. First off, this means do not hide your contact information. Have a public Twitter and Instagram and a portfolio site with easy to find contact information. Be easy to email or telephone. If you're not comfortable putting your phone number in a front facing position, include it on an accessible PDF of your resume. Now you're probably thinking this is all pretty basic advice. Make it easy to contact you, blah, blah, blah. Yes, it is basic. Surprisingly, not everyone does this. Some folks really like hiding their contact information or just not having it public at all. Uh, so don't be that person. Be sure to regularly check all of your inboxes, including the spam filters on your social media and all of your portfolio sites, your old school account, your new account, whatever. Uh, it's usually a good idea to reply to a potential client within an hour. 
It's obviously not always possible. Within 24 hours is a reasonable expectation. If you're contacting a studio for work and they respond with an offer, try your best to make their time frame work. I've had folks contact me and then say they're going on vacation or want to work on an unpaid project when they're offered a project. Um, these things are valid and important and you should definitely take vacations and you definitely work on the projects which you want to work on but from the but from the producer's point of view it is an immediate hassle you're not helping your chances if you don't have an accommodating schedule now everybody has responsibilities outside of their jobs and we need to be open about that whether it's picking up kids from daycare or being the daycare or going to doctor's appointments or other health issues or family concerns be honest about all that and allow a producer to work with you on a schedule there are definitely studios and producers who would not be happy with you having concerns outside of their own productions it's up to you if you want to work with them you should be in the position to make that choice now let's also note here that it is against the law for a potential employer to ask you if you have any disabilities or if you have any children or what your citizenship status is. If they do that, you might consider that not just a red flag, but a signal that they do not care about labor law and probably do not care about you. We should be working to continue building a field where the, that attitude about employees is discouraged. The whole of the artist should be supported in the studio work environment. So there you have it. That's my five list, top five list. So that went on a little longer than I expected. <laughs> Thanks for sticking with us. Uh, like, subscribe, bell hit, all that. Comment with any job hunting questions you might have or share some experiences you have looking for animation work. 